have been 12 rounds. He's been 10 on several occasions. He's fought some, pre- some former champions. He beat Juan Laporte in addition to beating Livingstone Gravel. Also beat Hector Lopez, who uh, had an NABF title in the past. And a good factor for him, too. He has fought in the United States. He's not coming over here making the title fight his first sojourn here. So that doesn't come into play for him here. He's been able, he got here a few days early, got used to the altitude, the time difference, stayed away from the tables. He did indeed. In fact, he even commented, as you look at his amateur record, where he did very well, he said, I live in a quiet suburb of Sydney, Australia. They asked him what he thought of Las Vegas. He said, it's a little too noisy for me here. So yes, I don't think he was too involved in all the nightlife and all the rest here. This 25-year-old and his handlers, though, were very upset about one thing. There is no Australian judge for this fight. And uh, there was even talk at a certain point that they would pull out of this fight because of that. But cooler heads prevailed, and he is here. He's now inside the arena here at the MGM. And it is sort of a ridiculous demand for a challenger to come in and try to decide who the judges are. A lot of times you see that. It seems like a psychological ploy to try to get the champion out of sorts. And they were trying to make an entrance and a statement when they did that. There is Constantine Zhu looking pretty relaxed and over the ropes he comes and yeah, that wasn't bad that wasn't too bad I what would you give that a I'll tell you what on a scale of six I'm high up there I give it a five nine a five nine and we know that in this case the Russian judge would have given him a young man from now from Australia who came in with a 13-0 record 10 KOs and the interesting thing about him is in his, ver- his fourth pro fight he was already fighting Juan Laporte in a 10-rounder, so he has been pushed ahead quickly. And he had the big amateur experience, uh, 259 and 11, he said, as an amateur. He got some good styles. He fought a lefty in his last fight. Doesn't think that Jake Rodriguez will be a big problem for him that way. Very cool, cool customer. We'll see how he does early in the fight that's been his time. Seven knockouts within two rounds for him. Does he have the rounds? Jake Rodriguez finally now making his way to the arena. A young man who is 29 years old and for all the world would have been defined a couple of years ago as a journeyman. He was a guy that nobody thought would win a world title. He got his chance in February of 1994 against Charles Murray, then the IBF junior welterweight title holder, a man considered by many to be almost unbeatable at that weight. Jake Rodriguez took him to school. And that's why he got the fight, being a 20 to 1 underdog. If you're good enough to be a 3 to 1 or a 2 and a half to 1 underdog, you'll be ducked for a while. So the best thing that ever happened to Jake Rodriguez is that he got overlooked. It happens once in a while. And then what happened when this young man forged his own rocking story, as you hear the music playing behind him? He fought Ray Oliveira. 1 and 12, defending his title, then fought George Scott in Bushkill, Pennsylvania, knocked him out at 9. And I think you will agree with me, has shown that he is a better fighter since he became a champion. Better fighter looking with, uh, you know, working with Pernell Whitaker, certainly didn't hurt him at all, and he's a better fighter as the bouts go on. Against George Scott here, he came on and was able to stop the fight late after Scott had gotten a good start in the bout. Most people don't think of Jake Rodriguez as a huge puncher, and in fact, he usually wears opponents down. But he certainly does have enough pop in his punch to make you respect him. Well, many fighters have ebb and flow in their bounds, but when Jake Rodriguez takes over a fight, it's usually permanent, whenever that moment comes. Here he comes. He has relished the moment here in the last few days. This, of course, a fight fought on pay-per-view, his first his first in an arena like this one at the MGM. And when we talked to him yesterday, he said, you know, I could have gotten even a little more attention. But with all these champions, I understand why I haven't. Maybe that's why he fights so well on his cards, too. He hasn't had to deal with a media blitz yet in his career. The flag of uh, Puerto Rico, where he was born, and the United States, where he resides now in Central Iceland, New York. Jake the Snake Rodriguez, who comes in here ironically as an underdog to Kazakh Zoo. 
He is kind of the Rodney Dangerfield of champions, isn't he? Especially when you consider the fact that Zoo is not a household name. He comes in against somebody that's not a major Olympic champion. So that's why Jake Rodriguez likes to think of himself as Rodney Dangerfield. Well, we will find out how it all plays out. And let's do that by going to Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, top rank incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Bud Weiser, present championship bout number three out of four. This contest is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Official and ringside shall remain the same, along with the International Boxing Federation. Supervisor at ringside for the IBF is Robert Weitzel. The three judges assigned to score this bout on a ten-point must system will be Bernie Cormier, Don O'Neill, and Chuck Jampa. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working in a world title bout. For the 107th time, referee Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Garden here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing in at 100. 39 pounds. He comes to us from the land down under, Sydney, Australia. His record, a perfect 13-0. 10 KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated challenger, Kostya Tsu. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the red trunks with white trim, Weighing 139 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Central Islip in New York, he brings a professional record of 26 victories with only two defeats, two draws, seven KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Jake the Snake Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez not looking at Costa Zoo, looking down instead. And we've, uh, we're heading into our third of four championship matches. That's the challenger, Costa Zoo. Young man from Australia, originally from Russia. And uh, Jake Rodriguez from Puerto Rico, living in the United States. Rodriguez is the left-hander. He makes no bones about it. When you say to him, what's your biggest advantage? He said, I'm a lefty. And That's why you have to like a guy who knows what his selling point is, and down he is. Wow. Zoo wasn't kidding. That not is, being bothered by lefties. That is a shock. I am astonished to see Jake Rodriguez go down so early. He is not the kind of guy that goes down. Charles Murray didn't do it. Man, Costa Zoo with a big right hand, and Rodriguez cornered there. Zoo is very potent early, and Rodriguez told us, he said, I know he's going to be tough early. He said, I have to get through that. Let's see if he can do it. Well, knowing it and being able to do it is two different things, and he's in trouble again with the lead right hand. Charles Murray tried to hit him with that right hand for 12 rounds and couldn't do it. Costa Zoo has done it twice and hurt him here in this first round. Keep him up, keep him up. Well, Jake Rodriguez shocked here in the first round. Here in his third title defense. Well, Costa well, Zoo going for it early. He knows this is his best chance right now. And a lot of patience by Costa Zoo. So, Jake Rodriguez halfway through round one, just trying to make sure he gets through this round. In his third defense of the IBF title, and so far it's a rugged one. 
Boy, the right hand of Zoo is getting in every time he throws it, Dave. I've yeah. never seen anyone land a right hand that often against Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez should try to tie up right now just to get through this round and slow down the pace. Costa Zoo is cutting off the ring effectively, scoring with his big right hand. Jake Rodriguez is on unsteady ground. A minute left to go in round one. Now, what is Jake Rodriguez doing in the corner? That's also not like him. He is. He was rocked by that right hand by Costa Zoo, and I don't know that he's ever quite gotten his senses back. Under a minute left to go in round one, the champion, Jake Rodriguez, has been down and has been hurt here in the first round. Jake Rodriguez is like a good pitcher. You have to get to him early, and Zoo has. The left hook has Rodriguez reeling. Rodriguez trying to fight off the ropes. Lands a good left hand. So it's survival time in this first round for Jake Rodriguez. And boy, he's having a hard time with it. 17 seconds left. They will seem like an eternity to Rodriguez. Jake lands the left hand. Costa Zhu in his first major TV appearance here in the United States has been all that he was advertised. My first look at him live as it is um, yours, and I'll tell you what, he's impressive. Okay, in my pocket here, reach in that pocket, the strength in there. Got it? Just relax and listen to Dave now. Listen to Dave. Go on, Dave. Yeah, he's doing it, so here it is, right here. Well, Zoo almost wins the fight right here. The jab by Rodriguez, he doesn't bring it back. The little shuffle step by Zoo, very impressive, sets up the knockdown. I think his quickness there surprised Jake Rodriguez especially for so early in the fight. Usually the feeling out process, and here again it almost lands for Jake Rodriguez, a big right hand. He almost went out of here in round one. You know what that right hand reminded me of a little bit? Remember when Michael Nunn knocked out Sambu Kalambe? Yes. In the first round, no one ever thought that it could happen. It was a roundhouse kind of a punch just like that. In this case, Rodriguez didn't stay down. We're in the round two. It's scheduled for 12. Jake Rodriguez in the red. The IBF junior welterweight title holder against challenger Costa Zhu from Australia by way of Russia. And Zhu has shown us early that his reputation as a puncher of the 10 KOs and 13 wins is legit. That impressive shuffle step setting up the knockdown. Rodriguez thought he could retreat a little bit after missing his jab. And that quick step by Zhu cut off the distance, and he went right at him. Had he tried to do that from outside, he would not have gotten home with that shot. Two minutes left to go in round two. And Rodriguez was outlanded 25-9 to nine in power shots in round one. There were about three shots in round one, which nearly ended it on him. Jake Rodriguez again, putting himself into the corner. That's very unlike him. It's a sign of a fighter who's a bit unsteady. And Zhu landed the right hand again. And if you've not seen Jake Rodriguez fight before, it is astonishing to see him getting hit with these many right hands. So is cutting off the ring effectively and Jake Rodriguez is moving straight back after Zoo attacks and he's making it easy for Zoo to go to that straight line and land the right hand here. There is uh, an abrasion underneath the eye of Costa Zoo. Under a minute left to go in round two. Jake Rodriguez has stabilized himself to some degree, but not able to do much offensively against Zhu. We're not accustomed to seeing Jake Rodriguez push his punches out either. He's pouring with his left hand. That's supposed to be his power hand. There's the jab. Now they told him, jab and move your head to Rodriguez. He's doing neither very effectively right now. 
just getting nailed with right hands. There's another one. So, only a few seconds remaining here in round two. Round two has been as difficult for Rodriguez almost as round one. He hasn't been knocked down or hurt, but he's taken a lot of shots from Zoo. That'll do it for round two. We follow the Australian based fighter into his corner. Where are you taking it? From the side. From the oh, side. Okay. They must like what's happening, not too many instructions. A look at those numbers, Dave. You don't usually see Jake Rodriguez being outlanded like that. And he throws a lot more. He's had some big numbers throughout his career. And Jake Rodriguez again taking more big shots. The right hand, two shots from the outside. And Zoo's movement has been the subtle key to this fight. A little slide stepping. We head into round three in this IBF Junior Welterweight title match. It's scheduled for 12. Jake Rodriguez is in red. He's the champion. Costa Zoo, the challenger, has had Rodriguez down in round one and has had him hurt on a couple of different occasions. Fighters who have gone so many rounds, they understand the pace of the bout. They know when the ring is being cut off on them. But Zoo is doing it quicker than Jake Rodriguez expects. Rodriguez pushed him back with a good straight left hand. Let's see if that had any impact on Costa Zoo. Well, Jake Rodriguez must establish his mugging ability in this bout. Getting inside and making that kind of pace. Right? Pushing off, doing some of the dirty work, whatever the referee allows you to do inside, he must has to do that so that Zoo doesn't keep coming right in on him. And the jab is really part of that, though, because like that, he's got to land the jab to get on the inside. Rodriguez showing a little bit more in this round. And Zoo is looking to plant that right hand behind a miss by Rodriguez. Let's remember, though, what Zoo's history has been and what Rodriguez told us the other day. He said, he's dangerous early, and he's going to try and get me early. If I don't go out, I think, as this fight wears on, he's going to get more cautious, and I'm going to come forward. We're seeing evidence that day already. He's talking about that as we were at the top, that Jake Rodriguez from about round five on. The key is what did Zoo take out of him in the early part, and that's what creates the entry. Who makes the most of his best scenario? Now, there was a right hand by Zoo that landed, a good right hand. It didn't have the kind of impact on Rodriguez with the earlier ones around. Well, for the first time, he was on his heels when he threw it, too, because Jake pushed him off the mark a little bit. Costa is moving back a little bit more. He lands a good counter shot there. As usual, Jake Rodriguez's fight is starting to get fun. Under a minute left to go in the round. Good left hook by Zoo. Rodriguez trying to establish his jab here in round three, and to some degree has done it. And Zeus squares up at certain times, and he has stopped Jake Rodriguez's momentum for a minute when he did that. Well, it's still been difficult for Rodriguez to land his punches offensively. Zoo has done a pretty good defensive job. So in round three... Things get a little bit more even. I don't know if it's a round that Rodriguez won, but he certainly did better than he did in rounds one and two. Nice crowd on hand here at the MGM Grand Garden, and they are being treated to some fine boxing. Alex Sanchez won in our first match by decision, and Gabriel has beat Freddie Libertori the TKO after the second round. We've had knockdowns in the first round of every fight. It's true. What would be the uh, proposition bet on that, huh? How about for sweeping the card at least 100 to 1? 
Yeah. So you have to pull his arm back, right? Mm -hmm. so okay. Two things. Mind. Two things. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. The hook. And don't let him get set. Bing, bing, bing. When he tries to get set, bing, bing, bing. When mm -hmm. he try, okay? He can't fight unless he's set. The hook is... Oh, well, Jake Rodriguez getting a sense of what he must do here. Countering shot over the top, and he actually made Zhu miss. So he threw off the distance of Costa Zhu there in round three. We head into round four, and the advice they gave him, very interesting. They said Zhu can't fight unless he's set. They want Rodriguez to initiate the pace a little bit more. Maybe, you know what? I disagree with their analysis after that round because Zhu has shuffled himself into position to get set to do his best damage thus far in the fight. He's had some very quick feet and gotten himself some good punching opportunities. And there's another example of it. He turns quickly and set up his own shot. Right hand by Zhu, but Rodriguez got a left, a right hook in. I wonder, though, even though Jake Rodriguez isn't landing that effectively, is he starting to make a small change in the tactic of this fight? He's certainly been able to do that in the last half of the round, and here, tying up, slowing down the pace, you're seeing a little more of the Jake Rodriguez left hand. He's starting to make Zhu miss a little bit more, though Costa is still, I think, landing more punches. And Oh, good right hook by Rodriguez. Pushes Zhu back a little bit. Costa, a young man who had a great amateur career in the Soviet Union. Won over 200 fights. Moved to Australia a couple of years ago. Has been a, a real favorite in that part of the world. He's really got a nice build, too. You can see him both as a slick boxer and as somebody with some pop. He is the the uh, quintessential boxer puncher. One of the actual rare ones. So many of the fighters call themselves that, and they're not. That is true. <laughs> Sometimes they're neither. Over a minute left to go here in round four. Al Bernstein, Dave Von Tempo. Happy you joined us on the eve of the Super Bowl. Got some super fights going. And we're seeing the grittiness that we expect to take place in this bout. Jake Rodriguez has recovered and now makes maybe his biggest statement of the fight there with the right hook. He'll try to go back to it. Rodriguez has a pretty good right hook when he throws it in a compact way. He is not getting hit as often with those right hands now. You have to say that for Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez has to force the pace of this fight throughout the middle rounds to try to set up something big at the end. He cannot let Zhu coast during the middle rounds here. Straight left gets in the Costa Zhu and there's the right by Zhu. Richard Steele getting some help from Rodriguez who wants him to warn or take a point away from Zhu for holding behind the head. So we wind down in round four, a round in which Rodriguez has had some better moments, but Costa Zhu is still pinpointed them with some of those good combinations. Fernando is in the locker room of Billy Schwer, the fighter from England. Let's go to Fernando right now. Thank you, Al. Billy, do you think the uh, Ruelas at height is an advantage or a disadvantage to you? Height, um, it's not too much taller than me. It's not a lot in it, really. So it's going to be um, a good fight. He's not all that much taller than me. He's only about an inch, inch and a half taller than me, so I don't think it's going to be a disadvantage at all. Have you found anybody that, uh, in, uh, with his uh, physique, you know, he's tall, lanky? Yeah, a um, couple of fights ago, I fought a Canadian, Howard Grant. He was unbeaten. He was very tall, very much similar to Ruelas. Thank you very much. Good luck. Back to you, Al. Thank you, Fernando. We peek in on uh, Costa Zhu, and here's Jake Rodriguez with some action. And body by Jake and left hook by Jake. <laughs> it's his uh, shot in there, and maybe he's getting his range in this fight. We'll see. We head into round five. Let me swear, one of the numerous fighters who have not fought in the United States on this card. Right. The total right. through round four. Interestingly, it's not that one-sided. 101 punches landed by Zhu of 282, and 74 landed of 245 for Jake Rodriguez. But the knockdown, of course, giving Zhu a bigger edge. And Jake Rodriguez is trying to turn the complexion of the fight. But Zhu is more durable than 
his other opponents, and Zhu has the knowledge of that fast start which he has been able to play off. Jake Rodriguez looking to Richard Steele for some help. Good right, hurt Rodriguez. Couple of good rights by Zhu. Looked like it rocked Jake Rodriguez. Gave him a brief taste of spaghetti legs there. Another right. Jake Rodriguez showing us a lot of grittiness here. He's, he's backing up. I think he's, he's taking hurt. some big right hand leads too. Costa Zhu landing more right hands against Jake Rodriguez than I think anyone has done in the last five fights I've seen him. And Jake is hurt. And Jake cannot be standing there like that. He's taking one big shot trying to load up, but Jake Rodriguez is not a puncher. He is definitely hurt. Costa Zhu has him in trouble. What is keeping him up right now? I don't know. He has been rocked with those right hands. And there you see Zhu again turning into his punches. And Jake goes down. That was a knockdown. I don't know why he didn't call that a knockdown. Jake oh. went down on his own. He went down so he could get the rest. Bad call by Richard Steele. Yet another bad call. That's a horrible call. Or a horrible non-call in this case. Jake went down because he was hurt. Well, Richard Steele blew that one. Good hook by Costa Zhu. And more pressure by Zhu here. So Jake Rodriguez suffering through a terrible round five. And he catches quite a break. It's not called a knockdown. This should be a 10-8 round. Yeah, a huge break. So he got the benefit of going down and still got the rest, but didn't get the knockdown called against him. Either way you look at it, though, it's been a big round for Costa Zhu. Half a minute left to go in round five. There's another right by Zhu. We were told this young man was a puncher, and he's showing us that against Jake Rodriguez. Not a guy you can hurt easily. Think of all the fighters who could not do this to Jake Rodriguez, starting with Charles Murray. Charles Murray among the most elite of this group that hasn't. Ray Oliveira couldn't do it against him. Sergey Artemio. That'll do it for the round, and Jake Rodriguez ambles back after another tough one. You all right? Yeah. Okay. You want to listen to Danny Dan? Okay. Let's go. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I had to turn in my name. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I gotta take a look at him. Yeah, sure, speak to him. Go ahead, all right. Well, I'm okay. Si, movete la cabeza, no te quedes parado. Baila para atrás que no te alcanza, ¿ok? ¿Ok? Y sabía, ya, vos de tan ya, ¿ok? Listen, listen to me. You've got to come with the hooks. You've got to start watching his hand, mate. I love you, mate. Come on. Well, how much more of this can Jake Rodriguez take? He is really receiving a pounding there. The right hand, the left being tied up here, shoved a little bit, taking everything. So he decides, he goes down here, and Richard Steele, a spectator, even though he had a pretty good seat. I thought he was meant to fall. I thought he was watching quite clearly what happened. The uppercut lands by Costa Zhu. Now take a look. Richard Steele is right on top of it. How do you not call that a knockdown? And meanwhile, here goes Jake Rodriguez down. This one will be called a knockdown. So here in round six, could this be the beginning of the end for Jake Rodriguez? He cannot take much more of this. He just doesn't have the speed, and Zhu has the power. It has been a tough outing for Jake Rodriguez. And we've never seen him in the corner like this, no. voluntarily going back there. And for Costa Zhu, this 25-year-old has shown us power in the right hand, power in the hook as well. And an ability to throw good combinations. Nice left by Rodriguez. And his balance. Notice where he is when he follows up and finishes the punch. He's square. Bad cut. There goes Rodriguez. He was hit when he was down. That's the second knockdown. There is no three knockdown rule. Bad cut over the eye of Con Costa Zoo made him go after Rodriguez. There you see it. And I believe that that came from a clash of heads. We'll find out if this fight goes past the round. Well, what is this? A point is being deducted. For holding. No. A point is being deducted from Costa Zhu for holding and hitting by Richard Steele, which evens the count in this round. Big right. 
Jake Rodriguez in trouble, goes down again. This has to be stopped. I think they almost have to stop it. It's already the third knockdown in this round. He's seeing too much zoo. The fight goes on with a minute 20 left. I don't know if Jake Rodriguez can stand too much. They've got to stop this fight, yes. Thank goodness. The fourth knockdown here in the sixth round signals the end for Jake Rodriguez, but a beginning for this man, Costa Zhu, who emigrated from Russia, went to Australia to ply his craft, lifts the title from Jake Rodriguez. He was a cool customer right down the line, never got rattled. Jake Rodriguez had one big flurry in the fight in rounds three and four, but Zhu was able to turn it around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. First thing, everybody else is going to go. Thank you, back to the corner. Back to the corner. Back to the corner. Hey, so can sin. Beautiful. Never mind. In the way. In the way. In plenty of time. Thank you. You look, at, you look at Jake Rodriguez. And uh, a disappointing outing to be sure for him. Young man who is defending his title for the third time. It was not to be. This man, Costa Tu, the 25 year old from Australia, originally from Russia. Everybody kept saying he was a champion of the future, and now he is just plain champion after lifting the IBF Junior Welterweight title from the head of Jake Rodriguez. He had given us notice that he was that kind of fighter. Jake Rodriguez down a total of five times in this fight, really six, but one wasn't called. No, no fault his own hit. As tough an outing for him as you can imagine, he showed a lot of heart, but absorbed a lot of punishment in the process. Michael Buffer is in the center of the ring. Let's go up to him. Referee Richard Steele calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 50 seconds of round number six. The winner and new IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World from the London under Sydney, Australia, Kostya So, Costa Du moves his record to 14-0. He wins the IBF Junior Welterweight title. A dream come true for him. And in Australia, they're plenty happy. This was the first knockdown of Jake Rodriguez. This was in, in round one. He served notice that he was going to have the power to get Jake in trouble. He did get him down. A rude beginning to this fight for Jake Rodriguez. And the power would continue for Zhu. This was the third knockdown of the fight, certainly not the last. Zhu landing the right hand with impunity as he had been during the course of the fight. And Richard Steele called that one a knockdown. Here is the end of the fight, in which the right hand again is the main weapon. Jake Rodriguez had taken so much punishment at this point, and Richard Steele said he had seen enough. A gallant... A gallant warrior, Jake Rodriguez, but the man that beat him, the champion, Costa Zhu from Australia, is in there with another champion. Let's go to Dave Von Temple. Okay, thanks, Al. Costa Zhu, terrific performance. You've been a fast, early fighter in your career. Did you want to make an early statement in this fight? No, not really. I know it's Jake is a very tough boxer, very good boxer, professional boxer. That's why I didn't expect anything. It can be anything. And yesterday... He said to me, we'll be friends after fight. Yes, we're all friends. What did you think? What did you think when you scored such an early knockdown in the beginning and you hit him and he went uh, down? I've got a strong punch. Very tough punch. Maybe he didn't expect so quickly start from me. That's why he, uh, he took this punch. And I'm very happy. What was your emotion when they stopped that? What went through your mind? First of all, now, my mind is... Uh, in Australia, my mom, my wife, my son, my sister there. And I say big hello. I love you. Okay. Congratulations. We'll be back to you here. Let's get Jake Rodriguez over here. Both of you guys together. Now you're shaking hands. So now, Jake, too much firepower for him tonight? Uh, he's got me in the right place. You know, it's, 
he called me Shaq and I went down, you know, any, any fighter, any fighter that can go down, you know, I did my best, you know, he's a great fighter, he came fast, he's got fast hands, so, you know, I don't have no, I don't have no complaint, you know, he went, he's champion now, you know, okay. I did my best. Let's get both of you guys in here, talk about the last round, describe the last round, both of you, we're going to play it real time for you, and basically, talk about the fight, guys. Uh, I want to apologize. Jake, okay, first knockdown here. You, you already put him down. What's going through your mind here? Right away, there's a knockdown. Uh, I don't know. Figure you're gonna finish him off at this point? No. I, I, like, it's a, he's a tough boxer. I know this, but like, it's uh, not really easy to hit him. And uh, he's got, he got good defense. I'm just, I was quicker. How did you get your right hand in there so much during this fight? Uh -huh. You set up some pretty good openings. Jake, did you know this was real trouble for you here? He was fast, I think he took uh, uh, was a win, Wimba, the mm -hmm. guy, and then he took uh, Lopez, and he had a good speed, you know, he saw a lot of combination. We, ne cool, we never see you backing up and going to the corner as much as we did in this fight. What caused that for you? Uh, I don't know, it wasn't my night, you know. Uh -huh. He did his best, he, you know, he was a champion now. I tried to do my best, you know the strongest fighter you've come up against physically? Uh, yeah, he's quick for his, you know. He's got a quick and he's strong. He's got a lot of combination, yeah. He deserved it, you know. I to know this, did, did you think you might have to knock him down 20 times before this thing ended? I don't know. He's a tough, uh -huh. he's a good boxer, that's why. It can be any round or it's the full distinction. It's the championship fight. Okay, what kind of guys would you like to fight? Now you have this title, who's out there for you? Any boxer. Because uh, it's not just, I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited, I'm very happy. Big moment for you. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Big moment. It's my second title, I mean, first it's amateur title, now it's a professional title. It's like you can say it. Your balance in this fight was tremendous. What did you look at? Your amateur background seemed like it really came up there. Uh, I fought with many Salzburg, and I don't know, a special combination for Salzburg. I know how to throw and punch. That's why this was just a normal fight. You yes. seemed unconcerned. Your last fight had been with the Southpaw, too. Yeah. Last two fights. Now, this is right away. Your right hand is throwing That's all the damage. That's why I apologize. There. Okay, you apologize to yeah. Jake there for hitting a little, yeah. a little bit late, and Jake certainly yeah. understands it. But your right hand lead, you were honing in on this against the Southpaw style, and you did it from the opening bell. Yeah. It's a special combination. And uh, also the neat little shuffle step to make yourself some distance. I think you cut off the ring a little faster than Jake expected. You were on top of him pretty early. I don't know. I don't know. That's right, because you did a very nice job in the fight. Any tough point in this bout for you? Did you think at all he was coming back in the middle rounds against you? No, I was very confident. And uh, I dictated all, all fight this fight. I, was, I had very good preparation for this fight. About three months I prepared for this fight this way. I was very tough, very fit. And it can be by this strongest round, I can be 12 rounds, doesn't really matter to 